This is my 3000 watt DIY mobile power station. I have three ways of charging it. I have 3000 watt inverter and 180 amp hour battery. and it powers most everything. And for this build here, I pretty much got everything I'm gonna use inside of the cart laid out here on the bench. I'm gonna be using the 200 amp hour must start battery. Now this actually has 180 amp hours due to the BMS parameters according to their website. I'm gonna be using a Renergy charge controller. This is a 10 amp, as well as I'm gonna have a shore power connection to charge everything if the solar is not good enough. This is a 45 amp charger from Progressive Dynamic, as well as I'm going to be using a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter to power everything. Also in this unit, I'm going to have the ability to set the voltage for charging. So if let's say my batteries get below a certain voltage point, uh, this relay is going to allow me to click on the charger to bring it up to a certain voltage and then click off. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to want to do is install the battery and figure out my layout of where everything is going to go inside the cart. Okay, I'm going to get a couple pieces of wood just to stick in the front here so, not, so I can't move forward and then fill in the sides so it can't move sideways and then I'm going to screw a piece in the back to stop it from moving around on this shelf. Okay, the battery is secure in the shelf now. Okay, I'm going to install a battery charger. This is specific for lithium batteries. I'm going to install this in the bottom of the cart closest to the battery. So I think right here would be a perfect spot. The fans can still exhaust as well as my leads are long enough to connect to the battery. I'm going to wire up this unit here. This is going to enable me to charge the batteries at a specific voltage that I set on this unit. And I have my little module here wired up. Uh, basically just the ground and the neutral stay together. And then as you can see on here, the uh, hot wire or line wire is actually what's going to be switched by this relay so this is going to allow me to set a voltage to either turn on or turn off so what's going to happen is if i plug this charger into here it's just going to come on and off when the voltage is preset or if i plug this directly into the wall let's say in a power outage once the power comes on it'll just automatically start charging or i can use this as standby if i have it hooked up to solar and the solar is not keeping the batteries charged enough, this will click on and bring the batteries up to charge. Okay, I think this layout's gonna work. I have my battery, charger, charge controller, inverter, and I got some switches here that I'm gonna wire up to run an LED light, as well as an on and off for the standby volt detector for the charger. Uh, now I'm just gonna mount I'm just going to mount a power bar on the front here. I'm just going to use the existing screws to mount this on. Okay, there's my power bar mounted on. This is going to give me a plug-in for everything. So as you can see here, I'm going to have my Renergy charge controller, as well as the back of the inverter, some switches. And over on this side, I have my charger as well as my volt detection for the power supply. 
Okay, now I'm ready to wire everything up. So I'm gonna run the battery positive and negative up to the back of the inverter. I'm gonna run my charge controller into the back of the inverter, which is connected to the battery. And yeah, so let's uh, wire it up. Okay, I have all my wiring prefabbed up. So now I'm just gonna start connecting everything and I'll show you how I'm doing it. First thing I'm gonna start with is the charge controller. Now I'm gonna wire in my solar and I have made up an XT60 connection just to make it easier to plug in and unplug the solar panels. So I just need to wire this in positive negative. Okay, there's my solar panel connection now. Now I'm gonna wire in my battery positive and negative, but I'm also gonna wire in switch here now I'm going to wire in the positive and the negative off of here, which is going to be connected to the back of the inverter. And from the back of the inverter, I've made up these ring terminals with a 10 amp fuse. And this is going to run over to the charge controller. So I'm just going to dry fit these onto the back of the inverter so I know my length. This is going to run along. Okay, so now I have one wire running to the battery and one wire running to the switch over here. Okay, now I can screw down my charge controller. This is all wired up. Moving on to wiring up this switching system here. So I'm gonna have this first one here run an LED, kind of an emergency light, so that I can see in the dark if the power goes out. So I'm just gonna mount that right here and that's gonna give me some good light below. Okay, that's mounted up. Now I just need to wire it. Now I'm gonna run my positive wire because the, the second switch on here, I'm gonna use it to turn on and off my low voltage detection device for the charging. Uh, everything's all wired up. Looks a little bit messy now, but I'm gonna zip tie everything. I have my LED light, my on off for my volt uh, reading for the battery. So now all I need to do is hook the inverter up to the battery and the charging cables up to the battery as well. And then I should be ready to fire it up and see if it works. Now for my battery connection, I'm using a pair of one gauge wire. That should give me more than enough of amperage for what I need. I am going to want to pre-charge my battery charger. That's good. I need to pre-charge the inverter positive. Now I have a few seconds before the capacitors drain and no spark. Uh, now I'll mention too, is you notice there's no fuse on my positive. The battery itself actually has a 200 amp fuse inside on the positive wire while it, when it comes off of the batteries. So I'm not worried about fusing any of this. Uh, I just have a fuse on the small gauge wire that's running to the positive here. So now let's test the light. And there we go. We have a light. And then also, I still have to set up the parameters for this. But as you can see there, 13.2. And the inverter and there you can see now we have 13.1 volts on the battery and 122 volts AC so that works okay now to set this unit to come on when the voltage is too low and then turn off at a predetermined voltage so right now my battery is right around 13.2 so there's a set and an enter button so this is gonna be my upper voltage. Now, just for the sake of this filming, I have it set at 14.6. My lower voltage, 13.6, which is above what the battery voltage is right now. Leave that at zero, uh, leave that, and then on low. So when it detects the low voltage, it's gonna charge up until it hits the 14.6 or your predetermined voltage. 
And there we go. Now as far as charging this unit, my first way of charging is a PWU charger by Renegy. I just wired up a XT90 clip, plug that in. So now as you can see, we are charging with 6.1 amps. And the other two ways I'm able to achieve charging is I have a progressive dynamic 45 amp lithium iron phosphate charger and I have this voltmeter hooked up to a switch. Now if I turn this switch on here, as you can see, we have our voltage down here of 13.2. So if I plug the charger cord for the progressive dynamic into this yellow extension cord, this runs through the relay in this device and then I plug this one into the wall. So the power is going to come through through the relay and then into the charger. So this is going to allow me to use supplemental power as it will only turn on once I hit a low voltage setting on this relay here. Another way I can run this is I can also just plug the charger directly into the wall. Let's say I have a power outage and I want to plug my furnace and whatever else into the pure sine wave inverter. Once the power comes on, it'll automatically start charging again. Or if I just want to run this off of solar and don't want my battery to run completely dead, I can use this volt meter here with the relay so that the battery will never go fully dead. And then up here on top, I have the pure sine wave inverter, 3000 watt from Reliable. This is plugged into a power bar, also have USB plugins, as well as my on-off switch. And there you have it, my complete all-in-one DIY mobile cart build. If you like this video, like, subscribe. If you have any questions about what I've done here, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.